Hey, it's Greg from Data Life, and today's video is to help you get into the data science field. Now, there's a lot of people trying to get into the field, and they're just getting discouraged because they're sending out resumes to these companies, and it just feels like the resume is getting ripped up as soon as the company gets it. They're not getting any replies, or if they do get replies, they're getting told that they don't have enough experience, they don't have technical skills, they just feel like all their attempts are falling short. Well, I felt the same way for a long time. In fact, I felt this way coming out of college because I had no professional work experience, no real technical expertise, and just felt like no company was going to hire me. Everything I sent, I was getting rejected for, felt like they weren't even looking at me. And I also didn't have a graduate degree. While I was seeing other people with graduate degrees that seems like they're doing a lot better than me, I didn't have that and mainly felt like I was a step back from them. That I wasn't on the same level playing field. But, but, there is a way to get into data science with no grad degree and no experience. I am living testament that the way that I'm going to tell you about works because I did it myself and I am here now as the most prestigious data scientist in Crystal City, Arlington, Virginia. Side note, this is not a get into data science quick scheme. All methods discussed in this video are proven and validated. Before we get into it, please remember to like and subscribe. I'm giving you a lot of great information, so help your boy out, please. Smash that like button and please subscribe. The best way to become a data scientist is actually by becoming a data analyst first. This is because data analysts are positions that typically you can get without any actual experience. Now, there's many senior level analyst positions and high level analyst experience that require experience. But there's a lot more entry level data analyst positions than there are entry level data science positions. Most data science positions require you to have more experience because of the nature of the job. So I would recommend starting as a data analyst because you will learn the skills that you need to become a data scientist and you'll also get some professional working experience while you're doing that. When I actually started my career, I wasn't a data scientist, I was a data analyst. And I started my career right out of college. I got a job at a digital marketing company. The name was Merkel and they were in Columbia, Maryland. So I started my career in data analytics because I could not find a data science job, just like many of you. And I guess look at me now. But I could not find a data science job. I, I applied to many data science jobs and I was just hearing nothing back. It's like my resume didn't even exist to them. So then I did some research and I found out that a lot of data scientists start off as data analysts, actually. People don't just jump into data science. They, it's kind of like a stepping stone. So I applied to a lot of data analyst positions and was able to land one at Merkel. Merkel was a great job for me to start my data science career. There was a lot of people around me who were also analysts who were very young and they were coming out of college. And you might think that a lot of them were very technical, but a lot of them had no technical background. So if you don't have a technical background, this is a much, much better way to get into data science because it's a lot easier to get into data analytics with a non-technical background than it is to get into data science with a non-technical background. Another thing is that I didn't have a graduate degree when I was working as a data analyst at Merkle. And a lot of the people actually around me had graduate degrees and we were making the same amount. Maybe they made a little bit more, but we had the same position, same job responsibilities, same everything. So for you people who do not have grad degrees right now or are planning on getting them into the future, maybe you wanna work a little bit and then get your grad degree or who knows what your situation is, but you don't have a grad degree. It's a lot easier to get into data analytics than data science with no graduate degree. And the transition from going to college to data analyst to data scientist was very smooth, actually. Now, I worked as a data analyst for a year, and in that year, I learned the things that got me hired as a data scientist. So one of the reasons analysts transition so well to data scientists is because of the technical skills that they learn. So one of the most common things you will learn while you are an analyst is using the language SQL. And that's the language you use to interact with databases. It's the fundamentals of any data professional is interacting with the database and pulling the data. You will learn to access tables and you're also going to learn to query them. And also while you're doing this, while you're interacting with the database, you're really gonna learn about the database infrastructure. 
which is something that all data professionals need to know. So it's actually not a very difficult language to learn. It can get very complicated, but when you're starting out, it's actually not that difficult to learn basic queries and basic commands to pull the data that you need. And knowing SQL is really the building blocks for anybody to be successful in data. And while you're actually learning this skills, you'll also be exposed to other programming languages like R and Python. Fortunately, the first language I was exposed to was SAS, which is old language that people are moving away from. If you're using SAS still, please stop it. Enough is enough. We don't want to see that anymore. Start using R or Python. I was actually exposed to R first. There was a lot of complicated data manipulation that had been done by hand before that they had actually automated with the use of R scripts. So if you've ever done data manipulation or data cleaning by hand, you know how hard it is or how time consuming it is. If you're doing all that, when I say by hand, I mean in Excel. When you're doing all that in Excel or manually, it's, a, it's very time consuming and it's not an efficient use of your time at all. So when you see that process automated, that shows you why those languages are so popular because it saves you so much time that you could be using on other things. And I also got Python experience too. Not as much, unfortunately, in my case, but I was able to expose the Python scripts too that also automated data cleaning. Now, while you may not be developing the code yourself, you will definitely be exposed to it and you can definitely learn from it. So I was actually passed down code that automated cleaning because I was on teams that had been around for a while and processes that had been built already before. But even just seeing the code that I was running and having these scripts that were passed down to me that I could use taught me a lot about the programming languages. In fact, that's what really helped me get good at coding because now you have a functional script where you can see how the language is working and you have access to seeing the syntax and how different functions are used and just how the language can be used in general. As an analyst, you will also learn a lot about data visualization. So these skills are essential, they're very valuable. It's very good to know how to show data effectively. You're going to need to be able to communicate and explain the data well. So it's good to have good dashboarding and reporting skills so that you can effectively show what you're trying to communicate. You can show trends in the data and you can show interesting points and interesting insights very easily. And the way a lot of these companies will have you learn data visualization is by having you learn how to use BI software. For instance, Tableau, Power BI, MicroStrategy, um, Cognos Analytics. Those are some very popular BI tools that you will get experience with and will really help you become a data scientist. Personally, I got experience to Tableau more than anything and I got so good at using it that now I use it personally. There's actually Tableau Public which you can just download right on your desktop and you can create complex visualizations right there. So if I'm exploring data or creating visualizations just for my personal projects, I actually use Tableau right there because it makes visualization a lot faster. And an added benefit of being good at creating visualizations is that these visualizations will be seen by a lot of people. So it's a great way to get your name out there because if you're putting out some great visualizations and they have a lot of attention to detail and they're very well built, higher ups and people around them will notice. And it's a great way for people to get notice of how well you're doing. So make sure you really master data visualization skills because they are very important. And last but not least, you will get some modeling experience. So when I was an analyst, I did get a little bit of modeling experience. I worked there for about a year and all in all, I got about two and a half months of modeling experience but that was good enough to help to really help me get my job in data science. So I got my modeling experience when my client was actually LifeLock. So I built a model that predicted the number of people that would enroll in a product based on the number of people in the household. So building this model really taught me a lot about the modeling process. I was exposed to different modeling techniques that I didn't know. So I ended up using an XGBoost model. Before I started the model, I didn't even know what boosting models were. So I was able to learn about boosting models, which were very new. And on Kaggle, they had been winning all sorts of data science competitions. So that made me have really innovative knowledge about the modeling field and it really gave me experience on what it's like to build a model to 
pull the data, to format the data for the model, to test different models, to tune different models, to finally select the correct model, and to actually deploy that model. And this experience was priceless in becoming a data scientist because that's pretty much all I do now in my data science position is experiment with machine learning models and implement them. Even that little bit of experience I got was very helpful. I, I was blessed enough to actually be the one building the model. A lot of analysts get modeling experience, but they don't actually get to build the model. That's built by somebody else. They are responsible for helping, for helping the person build the model by doing other things like pulling data, cleaning data, or just being an extra person to help work on the project. But I was fortunate enough to actually build the model. And there's a lot of analysts who are fortunate enough to get modeling experience. So let me tell you something about being a data analyst that is priceless. When you're a data analyst, you will be around data scientists and other statisticians and mathematicians and other data professionals a lot of the time. So when I was a data analyst, I quickly met the data science team and I was around them a lot. I actually got lunch with them every day and these people became my friends and I was actually able to use them as resources. Whenever I have a question, I was able to ask them. When I wanted to know how to learn data science, I would ask them. Obnoxious, obnoxious. I live right by a highway. Ugh, these people. Wrong, wrong, please. Anyway, being around people that are in the field you want to be in is actually priceless because they are the people who can answer any question you have about the field and you have an in-depth look on what it's actually like to work in that position because you can start seeing what they're working on and you can actually really decide, hmm, is this something that I really want to do? And seeing that what they were doing it reinforced that, yes, I really want to go into data science. So now, after being a data analyst for a little bit of time, let's say a year or two, let's take a look at our resume. So now we have SQL, R, and Python on our resume. Those are the three most common languages used by data scientists. Second, now we have data visualization skills. We know Tableau or we know Power BI, but we know how to create effective dashboards to communicate our results. Again, this is a lot of what data scientists do. These are very valuable skills. And lastly, now we have some modeling experience on our resume. We were able to understand how models are built. Even if we didn't actually build them ourselves, we understand the process of building a model. We've been exposed to models that have been deployed. We understand what goes with modeling and how it gets done. Now, not only do we have a great chance of getting a data science job, but we have a great chance of doing well in our data science job once we get it. Because the goal isn't just to get a data science job. The goal is to get a job and do well at it. And if you're a data analyst, you will definitely be set up to do well in your data science job. One thing I needed to tack on here at the end because it's very important is make sure you are really reading carefully these job descriptions about data analysts. Because there's a lot of positions that say analysts that have nothing to do with being the type of data analyst I'm talking about and will not help you become a data scientist. So if you see something that says operations analyst, that's most likely not a position that's going to help you get into data science. When you're reading your job descriptions, look for things like SQL, R, Python in the job description. Those are the things that you need to know. Look for things like data visualization, modeling and using other powerful BI software like Tableau. Look for things related to the things I just talked about in this video. Look for things related to things that would help you become a data scientist. Because again, there's a lot of positions out there that say analyst. Like you might see something that says banking analyst and it has nothing to do with anything data science related. That term analyst is thrown out there all the time. Make sure you are getting a real data analyst position and not wasting your time somewhere else. That would be tragic. So thanks for staying for this video with me. Hopefully you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and please, please, please like and subscribe and comment any questions you have too. Deuces, happy holidays.